and we will continue to work with that director. Right? 
And we walk in God's most intimate and amazing love. And here we're talking collectively, because we're represented as humanity by that first couple in the, in the garden. And that first couple, they walked and talked with God in the cool of the day in the garden. And like four-year-olds and five-year-olds, they were able to ask, what's that? Why is that? Well, what about that? Well, why? And why? How many of you remember kids doing this to you? And why? And then you told them that, and then they said, well, why? And why do kids do that? Are they trying to drive you crazy and just push you to exasperation? No, they want to know why. Make sense? They've got the most intimate and wonderful relationship with their papa, with their daddy God. And he's blessing them, and he's being patient with them, and he's loving on them, and he's just being tickled by all the weird things they notice, and the things that they're asking about. And then the story takes a hard turn, because they make some bad choices, and they, next, next thing we know, they're hiding themselves from God. You know, God loves them, God is blessing them, and God has done all these wonderful things for them, and they hide themselves from God. Have you done this, folks? Have you known that God loves you and everything was good from God's side to you, but you get your head in the wrong place and you start making some wrong choices and the next thing you know, you're trying to sneak around and hide from God? Now, first of all, could that ever work? And the answer is no. Because no matter where we go, God's already there. You can't hide from God. But that doesn't mean you can't try. And so we lie to ourselves and we tell ourselves, well, I'm hiding from God. He's not aware of this. I'm not, he's not aware of that. What does God want to do with us when we're doing that? He wants us to come back. We're going to see that in a minute. God is compassionate. And when we're off doing all kinds of mischief and naughtiness, God establishes a series of covenants with us. And he wants to restore what was lost in the catastrophe through this series of covenants. And here's the big idea of Hosea 11. I, I, I want you to know this is, this is really huge. And, and if you let this sink in, it changes everything. Hosea 11 teaches us that our Abba, our Daddy God, sees us as little children who have broken everything we love. Hmm. Without his compassion and help, all things will be left in ruin. Wow. And even with our Abba's help, we fail to keep his covenants and we prove to ourselves and the world that we need a Savior. And thanks be to God for our Lord Jesus Christ, because our Lord comes as God's Christ. As, as his Messiah, who perfectly keeps the covenants for us and establishes for us a righteousness and unworthiness that he can give us as a gift. You follow all that? I mean, that's as far as we can go with the, the 60s, just those first four, creation, <coughs> catastrophe, covenant, and then uh, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Josie already took my verse from Psalm 138, it's okay. I, I could have said it better. Right? God looks, our Abba God looks kindly on the lowly. But I do want to say this. Whenever you make yourself out to be something, does God going to look at you because you make yourself out to be something? And it says he looks upon the lowly. And I'm going to suggest in a couple minutes that we can get ourselves in places where, where you know, well, we just kind of get so full of ourselves that we don't leave any room for God to be Abba. Hmm. Hosea 11. I really want to get into the meat of this. When you read the first, like, seven books of the Bible, right? If you've been through, you've just read it straight through, you know, Genesis all the way to, you know, Joshua and Judges, and you're reading through all that, what is the impression you get? Who is God if, if, if you're just kind of reading through and skimming through parts of that? Who does God seem to be in the first seven books of the Bible? Anyone? 
Anyone know? Impressions. You know, I've heard it said that they, people, people read those first seven books and they think, the God that I see there is in need of an anger, an anger management program. Right? He's smiting and smoking and all this stuff is going on and we look at that and, and we go, wow, what's the difference between, how did he become so nice in the New Testament? Right? Well, I'm going to suggest that, that when we read the early chapters, uh, the early books of the Bible, I'm going to suggest that we don't have God's perspective. We don't understand what's going on there, and we see all the smiting and the smoking and all that stuff, and, and we do not understand what is truly happening, and Hosea 11 gives us such an incredible insight. This is pivotal. It changes everything if this is true. Our Abba sees us as little children who have broken everything. Listen to the way Hosea describes, you know, God. This is it's, it's Hosea speaking, but it's God speaking through Hosea. Out of Egypt I have called my son. It was I who taught Ephraim. That's a, a parallelism for Israel. It means all of God's people. It was I who taught Israel or Ephraim to walk. I led them with words of human kindness, with ties of love. To them I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek. And I bent down to feed them. What picture do you get of God there? This is Abba. This is Daddy God. This is the one who loves us and wants us and, and is wooing us and controlling us and, and inviting us. And he just wants us to jump in his arms and be picked up and enjoy being held. And that's God. Right? Where do all these pictures of smiting and smoting and all that stuff come from? Well, just, you know, we're using human language to talk about God at this point, but. You know, if I'm a really good dad and if I really love my kids and if some guy is offering my six-year-old poison, how do I act as a dad? I'm going to do some spite and smoking. Are you with me? If someone's harming my children, what am I going to do? I'm going to step in there. And that's who our Abba is. Right? And all this mission of God. When the children decide that they're going to rebel, what does God do? Well, it says, a son whom God loves, he chastens. And, and so you, sometimes you've got to bring some pretty strong, you know, encouragement to act differently to children. Am I right? And, and God is acting. He is in our lives. He's trying to bless us and call us back to himself. And he's doing that. And we are like, little children who have broken everything that we love. Now, parents, have you been that child? Do you have that child? Do you want to know what a trial I was to my parents? This is a true story. Now, this is ancient history in Utah. Does anyone remember Stadium Village at the University of Utah? It was one of the first housing units up there. Well, my parents were living in the city of village, and little Jimmy decided to see what would happen. And it almost always happened with me that it was with electrical. I decided to see what would happen if I stuck two bobby pins in the socket. I blew out three city blocks. <laughs> And I knocked myself across the room. Okay? And I didn't even know what happened. Okay? Because it, once those things hit that copper, I mean, boom! You know? And I was always doing stuff like that. Well, I needed close supervision. <laughs> And you can't let your kids blow out city blocks very often. <laughs> Do you get it? And a good dad has to step in and bring the right correction. Don't 
okay? And you're looking at me like, yeah, it's true, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I really did that. And a good dad has to step in and he has to just help and he's got to protect. And I was always breaking everything that I loved and it was almost always with electrical. You know, I blew the garage up once because then I got into chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> we will not even tell that story, okay? We will not even tell that story, okay? But but I needed cool supervision, and you know um, that I live uh, is a miracle, and and but you know we only survive because somebody loves us, and, and if we keep breaking everything we love, then somebody needs to step in and needs to help us. And this is who our Papa is, the one who steps in, the one who who comes alongside, the one who lifts us to, to his cheek, the one who just wants us, as the Apostle Paul says in Romans 8, 17, to raise our hands and cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy, hold me. Yeah. That's who God is. Isn't it amazing? We can get it so wrong. Now, verse 8. Hosea tells us that, you know, God says, My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. And as my children have done all these naughty things, and I've had to bring them back, and I've had to discipline them, and all this has happened, he says, I will still, in verses 9, 10, 11, I will still bring them, I will still sell them in their land. And yeah, there's going to be discipline, but he's going to bring his people through. He's a good, good God, and He is full of compassion for us. And He wants us to come to Him as His little ones. Jump to the Gospel of Mark with me. You know, if you study the Gospel of Mark closely, and I've got a group doing that with me in the Gospel of Mark Bible study right now, you know that in the first eight chapters of the Gospel of Mark, it's like Jesus cannot get rest. I mean, he is running all the time somewhere, and, and he barely has time to eat. He goes off to pray, and then people interrupt his prayers, and it's just this constant deal. And, and, and it's no wonder then that by chapter 10 of the Gospel of Mark, when people are bringing little children to Jesus, his disciples are saying, Enough! Stop it! Go away! Leave him alone! He's tired! They're trying to protect him, right? And Jesus will have none of that. Because what does Jesus want? He wants the little children to come. And so he, he says, and this is as important as anything we can say in terms of discipleship. Let the little children come to me. Do not enter them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child Did you hear that? If you won't receive it as a little child, you'll never enter it. Now, how do we try to get the kingdom of God? Right? There's all these things that we try, and you know, have you ever tried to impress God? Have you really ever thought, I, I, I've been doing this right for a long time, and I got this all wired, and you know, I've become something, and, and I know something, and, and you kind of get full of yourself. Anyone else besides me ever get full of himself? Yeah. Right? And, you know, you just kind of think that you've become something, and, and you, you, you come before God, and it's like, oh, here I am. Is he impressed with any of that? Not with all that stuff trying to impress him. He wants us to come seeking intimacy, saying, I'm a father, daddy. And it's as we're transformed by that relationship, we'll go out and we will do all those good things. Right? We're saved not by the works, but for the works. We'll go out and we'll do those things, but we won't do it because we're driven by our ego. We'll do it because we're sharing our mama's love. It's just a whole different thing. And the Lord wants us to come to Him. 
this little children. Not pretending to be anything fancy or superior, but just to come to him because we want to be loved and we want to be helped. Is that amazing? That's who he is. And our Abba cannot resist our childlike, childlike reach for help, for the love, for his tender compassion when we find ourselves in places of misery and trouble. Have you found yourself in places of misery and trouble? Have you spent months trying to dig yourself out of that place of misery and trouble? I'm the only one, right? And, you know, you, you do that, and, and what does God want when you're in that place of misery and trouble? Does he want you to dig yourself out? Or does he want you to come in like a little child? change 
Um, we're still going to say the creed once a month. Okay? Say amen, I mean. Say amen. No? <laughs> no, we need, to, we need to do these things sometimes, but we don't have to do them all the time. And we're going to be shifting the forms. Okay? And, uh, you know, you know, I was kind of thinking, you know, please stand for the Holy Gospel. Um, if you're not liturgical, if you don't understand, you know, why are we standing? Right? And, and that feels just really strange if you're coming from somewhere else. And so we're going to be shifting some of those things. And um, what we're asking from you all is incredible patience. Well, we find our way. Well, we work this out. We're going to introduce the changes between now and the 1st of December. Right? So things are going to be changing. Uh, and we want you to be patient with us. And we want you to pray for us. And uh, we're going to be evaluating it over several months to come. And we very, very much want to hear from you in terms of um, that's working, that's not working. Does that make sense? Our reason is because we want there to be one place, one service, where we can invite people in and be told the 8 o'clock and the 9.30 service, you know, this is a, it's your bringing to people who can shepherd and you from going out to Lutheran or Catholic or Episcopal background. This would be the easy place to bring you. Bring them to 1115 first, let them get comfortable there. And then you can invite them to one of the other services because those two services will still retain all the formal liturgical elements. So anyone need tomatoes? <laughs> right? We're gonna we're, not, not to eat, to throw. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, you kind of look at the little shop at me, but um, but but we really believe this is time. You know, Pastor Jeff Elmo, Pastor Christine and I, we were talking about these kinds of things 10 years ago, and we believe that, that now is an opportune time for us to begin to do that. And so, uh, um, uh, we just, again, we ask your patience, and uh, we really want you to stay in dialogue with us uh, about how it feels. Okay? Our heart is, what, why do we want to do this? Out of compassion, trying to make an easier road in and, uh, um, you know, it, it just seems to me that we're letting them be little children as they come uh, to these services. And uh, that, that, that fits for us, and we hope that in the months to come, it will fit for you. So, again, be chatting with us, and uh, uh, we just want to bless one another and bless you as you're blessing your friends and your neighbors. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Good. So, Lutheran aerobics, let's stand. <laughs> and we want to uh, worship the Lord as our team leads us. And if you have things you want to 